So the Romans ruled the world, destroyed themselves. Now here's the big part. The Roman Empire did not fall by invasion. It fell by disintegration. Disintegration means it fell apart, like a piece of, of cake that just broke up in little pieces. I saw the Roman Empire fell apart. Oh, you just broke up. And what happened was everybody scrambled for power. And the result was many little kingdoms. Instead of one kingdom, many little kingdoms. Let me give you some of their names. Spanian, Franco, Belger. This is Roman kingdom. Anglo, Roman kingdoms. Pachuco, Roman kingdoms. We know these kingdoms in English. Franco, France. Belger, Belgium. Porco, Portugal. Anglo, Spanian. They're all kingdoms. <sighs> they are all Romans. They are all Romans. So their psyche, their mentality, ingrained. We were chosen by the gods to rule anybody who don't have our traits. They were chosen by the gods to be our servants and our slaves. They are not complete divine beings like us. We are superior. So the French and the Spanish and the Portuguese and the British, Anglo, call them Anglo, they decided to expand their kingdoms. So they came to Africa and the Caribbean. And we call it colonization. Colonization is the expansion of Greek leadership philosophy. So going to Africa and bringing slaves over as merchandise was easy. Why? Big nose, big lip, dark skin, busy head, black eyes. I found a million servants, they say. So they come to the West, they establish their plantations, whether it is Carolina or Florida or Louisiana or the Bahamas or Jamaica or Barbados or St. Kitts or St. Thomas or St. Lucia or Guyana or Mexico. They had their plantations and they couldn't use the people they met here because they killed them out with disease. And so they went and found some divine slaves chosen by the gods to work the ground. And they brought them over on ships and the first ones to bring them was the Portuguese. The Portuguese told the British we found some people to work the farms and the British say where you got them from they follow us and they went to the south the west coast of Africa and then the French found out the French says oh oh let's go get some too and then the Spanish says oh let's get some too and everybody started dashing for divine slaves remember divine means you were chosen by the gods it's not racism it's leadership philosophy that is in the psyche of the system oh I am here you are here, some of you of my pigmentation and millions of us here in the region because of a leadership philosophy. That's how important leadership is. If the blind lead the blind, we were being led and they convinced you. Matter of fact, if you read the writings of the oppressor, they wrote things like this. They read the Bible on you. They said, now you must be good slaves. And they gave us Jesus. You wonder why, you know, the black Muslims and people like that rose up? Because they even used Jesus as part of manipulation. You know, Jesus said you must be nice slaves. And then you'll go to heaven. If you go to heaven, you'll get robe and shoes. You can't get them now because we ain't giving you none. But, if, you know, you get them and you get to heaven. So now we, so the, so the slave in the, in the farm starts singing, I got a shoe. Master, you got a shoe. All of God's children got a shoe. But I ain't gonna get mine until I go to heaven. I'll walk all over. See, in other words, you get yours now, Master. I can get mine and I got heaven. All of that is brainwashing. Those songs that we used to glory and call Negro spiritual, you need to read the words of those songs. They are strong songs of conversion for your mind to make sure you never rise above. I used to sing them, so don't look at me funny. I was born in a little town called Bain Town. That was a village of slaves. I'm trying to show you where leadership problems come from. So for 394 years, they ruled these islands and they made all of us believe you were born to clean my house. You were created to plant my corn. You, you were sent by God to wash my clothes and cook for my children. And so there we were stuck in the back room. Oh, by the way, you know, you ain't got no charisma. So you must be seen and not heard. You see, that's all that's part of the system. So you're supposed to work, but no one's supposed to see you. And so the little slave walk around the house cooking, and, that, you know, and they ain't supposed to be around when master got friends. See, the whole thing, psychological, that's why some of you all are timid. You are so timid today, and you think you're cool. Timidity was taught. That is why when a man of my pigmentation speaks up, it makes them nervous, because you ain't behaving. 
Some of y'all wonder why they thought Martin Luther King was a problem. Because he was a black man talking loud. You ain't supposed to talk loud. Stay in your southern church, have church with a stained glass window and shout by yourself. Don't come out here telling us we're wrong. That was the problem. It was a, it was a leadership problem. To tell Miss Rosa Parks that she's in the wrong seat was very natural for them. You don't understand. You say, there ain't no prejudice. This is the conditioning of the culture. You ain't supposed to sit here. Yeah, but I'm a human. You ain't no complete human. See? <laughs> the, the gods told us where you're supposed to sit. In the back, they say. Divine assignment. I'm saying this for a reason. That is still here in the Bahamas. Yes. No matter how much school you go to, no matter how much degrees you get, no matter how much you think you know, when you come back, they tell you, you're just a smart slave. It's a leadership mentality. So now you know why Miles Monroe is angry. You see why I hate oppression? Because I taught the truth. I love, it. I love everybody. I like everybody, you know. I like everybody. <laughs> but don't you ever imagine you're better than me. Mm. <laughs> oh, mm -mm. You think you're better? I draw a line. Cross that. That's a being down talk. You don't know about that. And if I draw a line, that means fight start. 